Hello friends and welcome to Tutorials Point. Well, we all like to communicate in one way or the other, right? Sometimes we communicate through verbal language, sometimes through the written language. And don't you think while we, uh, you know, communicate through written language, writing an email is such an important part of that, isn't it? Be it a workplace, be it any organization, any office or, you know, uh, works or, or, you know, day to day works of our life, for example, going and uh, maybe submitting an application or something like that. So it's such an important part of our life. You know, according to the latest survey, there, there are like millions and billions of emails that are written each day. So important are, is, you know, this email uh, writing is that important in our life. So don't you think that, uh, you know, because it is so important and because uh, it also helps to portray as to, uh, you know, whenever you, maybe you're applying for a job or something and don't you think it's like the first impression that you put forward, isn't it? It is. So because of which it is, uh, you know, it forms a very, very, very important uh, part of our life. So it is really important that we really know and we actually know and apply what are the, uh, you know, the do's and don'ts of writing emails or to be more precise, we should be aware what are email etiquettes, right? So for this reason, we have made this video just for you to understand what are the right ways of writing an email. So let us go ahead and study about them. Okay, well, first of all, uh, let me just quickly make you aware of what are the parts of an email, right? So first of all, you have the recipient's ad address, of course, uh, to whom uh, you are addressing your email. Uh, that is, you know, a separate box, which uh, going forward, I'll just show it to you. Then you have CC and BCC. CC means carbon copy and BCC means blind copy, carbon copy. So going forward, we will also see the significance of the same. Then you have date and time stamp, which is automatically there in any or every email. Uh, then you have the subject line, then salutation, body, attachment, and finally you have the closing. So these are the basic, uh, you know, parts of um, an email, uh, be it, you know, through whichever browser or through whichever media that you're writing an email. These are basic parts which are there in every, uh, you know, type of email that you're writing. So let us go ahead and first see as to uh, you know what is recipient's address and how do we uh, how do we actually use it or how should we uh, be you know you should be should get it into practice what is the right way of using it yeah okay so first of all uh, is your uh, recipient's address so that's the first thing that you need to enter uh, when composing an email uh, so this is entered before you compose the body of an email so whenever you observe be through uh, you know whichever uh, browser that you are using to write your email you'll observe that you have this to written right so when you have this to this only means to whom you are addressing your email and uh, basis um, or uh, you know it is uh, completely your discretion or basis the requirement uh, to whomever you want to address you type their email address basis you know be it a single uh, recipient or be it multiple or uh, for uh, for that reason uh, it may be a group as well right wherein to whom you want to address the email so uh, you know you will write their email addresses here and uh, one two or three or as many as you want to enter this is your requirement and this is how uh, just keep in the keep this thing in your mind whenever you are uh, you know writing an email of the recipient whenever you're entering just cross check it before sending because by mistake you might end up uh, you know sending a wrong email to a recipient who doesn't need it which might not uh, put you in a very very good spot isn't it so it's always a good idea to check um, cross check actually before sending your email it is always a good idea to cross check as to if you have correctly entered the email address of the recipient or not so so that you are always sure that you know you are addressing the right email to the right person okay then is your cc and bcc which is a very very important feature of your email writing and you have to use it very very carefully Otherwise, you might end up landing yourself in trouble. So let's see how. So first, as I already told you, two. So you've entered 
uh, the email address of to, to whomever you want to send it to. Then you have CC. So CC means carbon copy, right? So whenever you write CC, uh, so, so I'll tell you how you can relate it to real life. So whenever you're sending an email, right, it's kind of a conversation that is going on between, uh, you know, multiple people or two persons or uh, as many, uh, you know, as uh, people, as many as required or, you know, how, how many ever people you want uh, to be the, there in your conversation, right? So when you've entered the email address of the recipient, so it's kind of a conversation that is going on between a group of persons, right? So whenever you have CC'd it to somebody, what does it mean? It means that this entire conversation can be viewed by some third person as well, right? So this third person is aware of the email, uh, you know, chain that is going back and forth between the recipients, right? So this person is aware of the conversation and vis-a-vis -vis these people are also aware that so and so person to whom the uh, you know the email has been cc'd is you know seeing our or is uh, has uh, the right to see our conversation that is going on right because all the mails that will be addressed to the recipient will also go to the person who has been cc'd in the uh, that entire email chain right so this is the importance of carbon copy now comes BCC for which you have to be really, really careful. Now, what is BCC? It is a blind carbon copy. And when you BCC someone, right? Now, in CC, everyone was aware, right? Whoever is viewing our conversation. But when you BCC someone, these people are not aware that there is some third person who is seeing our conversation, right? So you might end up, you know, kind of uh, entering someone's private space because you you never know that you know there's a there, there's a particular conversation which the recipients do not uh, want should be viewed by someone else but without them being, even being aware of it the, there's some person who is able to view it so which you know might not put a very good uh, impression on the recipients or the person uh, you know with whomever the conversation is going on so until and unless you have you know, a, a proper permission uh, for doing this, this should definitely not be used. So be very, very careful uh, while you are using BCC because it might, you know, kind of create an impression of your conversation being being eavesdro uh, eavesdropped, right? You might feel that this, you know, your conversation is being unnecessarily heard by someone else and your uh, privacy has been violated. So for this reason, be really, really careful while you are using BCC. Otherwise, you might end up in trouble, yeah? Okay, then is your written timestamp, so which automatically appears, you need not to uh, enter that manually, it automatically appears whenever you send, uh, you know, an email and the importance of this is that now that, you know, you've been sent an email and you are expected to reply uh, to that mail within some particular time span and then you cannot deny that you've not received an email because there's already a timestamp which is um, attached to your email interface so this is the importance and another thing is it, it definitely uh, you know keeps you uh, aware as to when a particular conversation was started or when a particular message is being sent to you so it's it kind of helps you to keep a track of the same so that is the importance of uh, timestamps and um, of course it automatically appears there's nothing that you have to do about it okay now is your subject line so subject line is um, what do you say? It's kind of a first impression uh, that the recipient will get of your conversation. So your subject line has to be designed really, really smartly. It should be really short and crisp. And, you know, along with that, it should also pass on the important information which would be encapsulated in your mail. Now, you know, there might be situations wherein your recipient might not have, uh, you know, enough time to go through all the mails because of, you know, X, Y, Z reasons. So whenever your, your subject line is framed in a way uh, that, you know, it, it manages to grab the attention of the recipient, definitely uh, it is, you know, it is for sure that your 
recipient in spite of uh, tight schedules will definitely end up opening your mail so that is the importance of your subject line and not only that it also gives an overview of what the conversation uh, which is uh, being written in the mail about so that is the importance of subject line so you should be really really careful and uh, you know you have to design your subject line basis your objective so that your email doesn't go unread right so of course as i already told you it should be short crisp and formal and it should not be vague because if as i uh, you know already told you your recipient might not have or might not prioritize your email as much so if your and to top it all if your subject line is way too vague then forget it that the uh, you know the recipient is going to read your mail that will definitely not happen because it's kind of a first impression it's just like you can you know you can compare it to for example if you go to a bookstore right you see different books there now the book whose title is catchy is what actually attracts your attention doesn't it you don't go ahead and open all the books and browse through them right so it's only the titles which are really really catchy that grab your attention so same is the case with your subject line so if you really want your emails to be read and if you really want your information to be uh, you know considered and passed on to everyone make a very very good subject line right so there are a few things which you need to uh, uh, you know take cognizance of while you are uh, framing your subject line and that is first of all you should not use all caps so uh, you know just just take a look at this just skim through this line you know this one uh, in the first impression doesn't it uh, you know doesn't it kind of gives an impression that someone is trying to you know be very rude and loud and trying to force something on you or maybe giving you a warning or something like that right so for that reason you should not use excessive capitalization or for that matter excessive punctuations wherein they are not required because we have this you know of uh, we probably develop this habit of using excessive capitalization and punctuations because of our informal conversations which probably go on whatsapp or any uh, you know message media so we are habituated to that informal kind of a conversation written conversation and what happens is it ultimately transitions to uh, you know it comes uh, into picture while we are writing our email as well but we should not forget that email is a very very you know a formal way of communication and we cannot uh, you know afford to just write anything and everything over the top of our mind that we feel like we cannot do that we should be very very formal crisp and very very informative while we are writing our email right so uh, of course as i already told you you do not have to use excessive capitalization and unnecessary punctuations while you are framing your email be this you know using too many exclamation marks you know it conveys a very strong first of all of course grammatically also it's not correct and second thing is it conveys a lot of expressions right so and you never know how would the recipient accept it so it is always a good idea not to use punctuations unnecessarily or for that matter you know your excessive punctuations also might end up triggering your spam folder and you don't even know you won't even be aware that your email which you sent to a recipient had already gone into his or her spam and you were waiting that you know okay your email is going to go to the recipient the recipient is going to reply which might not even happen because because of excessive and useless punctuations it might just have you know triggered the recipient spam folder so you cannot do anything about it so it's always uh, you know good to take such precautions and not to use unnecessary punctuations when they are not required right and uh, of course um, uh, along with the fact that it doesn't it's not very presentable and very formal it might also end up uh, triggering your spam so you know you don't even need to use a full stop even if you do not use a full stop uh, while you are framing your subject line that is also fine it's not considered wrong because it's really not required as much you know as much as you can just avoid using punctuations because they are not required so even if you are you have not used a full stop in your um, in your subject line it is okay it is fine it's not considered wrong right you of course might want to capitalize the first letter where it is required of course you do you uh, should not avoid that as well but 
yes when not necessary don't use any punctuations right okay now of course short and crisp so try to limit it to 50 characters as much as you can and uh, do not write misleading content yes this is very very important this usually happens in your sales email isn't it don't we get so many promotional uh, you know sales and all of that mails throughout the day you know this brand that brand and all of that and just getting attracted okay you get 60 percent discount 70 percent and so on and so forth the viewer uh, the recipient might just open it and when you open you realize it was just uh, you know not real it was fake and what will happen when the customers feel cheated they definitely um, will no longer trust your brand so no doubt even if you are marketing something even if you want to put it forward so try and make it attractive but along with that try not to make it uh, you know misleading and fake for the customers otherwise they might end up losing their trust in you okay of course spelling mistakes um, not it's not very cool to make spelling mistakes while you're in a formal conversation and of course um, straightforward and you should make it sound formal and try to make it as intriguing as you want as you can for the readers so that they especially take out time to read all the mails it's you know you can compare it to yourself don't we get so many emails throughout the day and do we really read all of them we do not i'm not talking about your office emails i'm talking about in general emails like uh, you know your promotional brands and so and so on you know do we really read it we do not unless and until the subject line is really really catchy and of course it's not misleading right so these are the things which you uh, you know amalgamation of all of this is required to make your subject line really really attractive for the readers okay then is your salutation so how do you greet um, how do you open your email uh, the body of your email it is through salutation how do you greet what are the various rules which you need to keep in mind while you are uh, you know uh, greeting someone so of course that's the first thing so it's important to convey an appropriate level of familiar uh, familiarity and respect of course um, it is good to go uh, you know very very easy and flippant and light uh, it's good to have a light-hearted conversation but it all should be within boundaries basis the relation that you share with the recipient right you your recipient if you share a very formal relationship you definitely cannot afford to make it way too friendly overtly friendly and um, you know easy going so it all of that again has to be very very balanced and apt based on the relation that you share right so for example dear is uh, you know the most commonly used and the most appropriate salutation which is um, in your formal as well as your informal relationships as well the dear is something which is very appropriate very standard and uh, this is the you can use it uh, no matter to whom you are addressing your email uh, so then this is again something uh, which is very important it is to whom it may concern so this is written as it is as you see here to whom it may concern this is written as it is and when do you write it you only write it in the situations wherein you know you're sending out a generic email right and uh, so the pause you don't know uh, you know who all are going to get your uh, or who all is who all are going to read your email right so then only to the person to whom it is actually valid or to whom it is actually uh, concerned should open and read it right so for example let us say it's it's about a, a job posting or something like that so of course uh, whenever there is uh, some some kind of a you know vacancy which is there uh, for a particular position in any in any company it definitely has some uh, you know they have some prerequisites which need to be met by the person who uh, is applying there right so of course in such situations to whom it may concern means only those person who think who actually meet this criteria should respond to this email is what is meant by this so uh, this is again a very very formally used uh, salutation which you can use in case you are sending out a generic email and uh, you only require the the you know the uh, kind of uh, specific people who actually meet your criteria to respond to your mail is uh, when you are going to use this salutation right so um, as i already told you 
while uh, you you know you're applying you are maybe um, you know uh, framing a mail for any particular job vacancy something is when uh, this definitely should be used so other also other ways also to greet could be you know hello hi so these are also very very formal and appropriate ways in which you can greet um, having said that of course there are situations where we share very very informal relationship uh, with a particular person to whom you're addressing you can address them by their name or maybe by their surnames as well so that also is okay but basis your relationship you have to decide as to which is the best salutation that you can use to address a particular recipient. Okay, now is your body. So body of course is, um, you know, the most important part of your entire email. The, the recipient has opened it. Now your body should actually have very, very apt content uh, so that, you know, it justifies the recipient opening your email, right? So. Now, how, how do you actually divide your entire body? The opening paragraph should, should set the tone and reason for your email. Of course, uh, you're going to introduce yourself. Uh, first of all, you might as well, uh, you know, end up asking for the other person, greet the other person, which you've already done, of course. And then you set a tone. Like, if it is a very, very formal message that you are passing on, you need not to even, uh, you know, ask or, in, or you know, just, kind of uh, ask for their um, how are you doing and all that you need not even do that just directly come to point uh, or this email is about so and so reason then you might want to elaborate it in, uh, about it in the next paragraph uh, but that is how you are going to first paragraph is primarily to set the tone that also again bases the relationship that you share with the recipient right so then what do you do? For example, look at an example. My name is ABC, uh, just a random name that we've picked up. And this email is with reference to whatever reason that you want, right? So this could be a very, very formal, um, uh, you know, way of starting your email body. Of course, having said that, my name is ABC. Also, you need to mention only if you feel that the recipient is completely uh, doesn't know you, right? You're completely unknown to the recipient. In that case, you can use it. In case you are addressing your mail to any particular teammate or any person who actually knows you, you need not even write that, right? Because in the end, when you close your email, you will have your signature in there, right? So in the signature, your name will already be there and you need not to uh, repeatedly tell who you are that is fine but in case you are addressing your email to someone who is completely unknown is when you need to write this right so of course uh, then you just you're just going to briefly tell the reason that why is why are you actually sending this email right then you um, elaborate how you want to you can elaborate in the next paragraph of course, um, then, um, you know, just like the way we, we are already told, try not to frame very, very big paragraphs. Try to, uh, you know, write your content in the form of points because that is far more easy for the recipient to read rather than one big story because um, definitely it's not very, very easy and very, very presentable as well, right? So, um, and of course, you don't have to give unnecessary information that is not relevant to the context of your conversation, right? And then uh, what you do is in the last paragraph, you, you always have to give a space between the different paragraphs, right? So in the last paragraph, whatever intervention uh, that you need from the recipient is what you're going to mention about, right? You can, uh, you can probably start with, I request you to help me with the same or whatever is the, is the context of your conversation that is going on. Okay, um, so uh, as I already told you, the closing of the email should also support the nature of your email. If you're asking a question, close with something like, hope you have an answer, hope, uh, hope to have an answer from you soon. Of course, all of that, uh, your closing paragraph, which means your last paragraph will uh, completely go, uh, should be in line with the context of your conversation, right? So if you have asked a question and you're, you're expecting an answer, you definitely set an expectation and then that I hope to, uh, you, you know, hear from you very soon uh, or looking forward to hearing from you very soon. And if you are addressing a question and with hope I have sufficiently answered your queries, you might as well be on the other side where you've been asked something, right? So in that case also, it's always a good idea to end your uh, or, or uh, you know, to close your email um, by writing this hope that I have answered 
uh, all your questions or even if you still have concerns you can write back to me so this is a uh, a very very uh, good and a decent way of closing your email in that case so you know this is how you're going to frame your body and you should definitely uh, have a space you know it's it's a good idea to have at least uh, one line space between each paragraph it definitely makes your content very very presentable and another very very important thing is that you do not need unnecessary acronyms or abbreviations we all have this habit of using pfa right pfa that is not right first of all please find attached your recipient doesn't need to you know take a magnifying glass and start finding something that's not the right way to uh, that's not the most appropriate uh, way to address your concern it is always good you can probably write you know attached is the file uh, that you asked for or attached is or following is the content that you asked for so pfa is not a very very cool way of addressing your email right okay so attachments of course there is an icon for attachment you can do you can use that and attach whatever content that you want to and of course something that is very important is use caution when opening attachments that are sent to you as they can contain virus never open an attachment from somebody you do not know so this is very very important because you never know uh, you know the content of your attachment might be malicious for your system so try not uh, you know you opening attachment from uh, unnecessary or from unknown users because that might end up harming your own system and as i already told you don't use pfa this is not the most appropriate way to address your concern right okay now is the closing so how do you close your email right so, so uh, now of course uh, there are a few uh, emails interfaces which actually allow you to set your signature which you can which is a very good idea to do because uh, you know sometimes in a hurry you might as well end up forgetting uh, to write a closing statement so in that case this is what is going to save you a lot of trouble right so um, of course this feature is optional it is again it's not uh, something that is mandatory it is completely your discretion how you want to set it so you can what, what could be the most appropriate way to close it could be regards or sincerely followed by a comma and in the end you can uh, below that you can write your name or even if you write your designation or particular uh, you know credentials which you have maybe your number or something that that is completely your discretion right then you can also write thank you or with appreciation with gratitude or your sincerely so these are also uh, you know appropriate this is also an appropriate closing statement then uh, as i already told you it's completely your discretion if you want to give your contact information or your designation or uh, if uh, in case you know you are writing on behalf of an, a particular organization if you want to mention the organization's name that is completely up to you as to how much uh, information that you want to pass forward along with your name uh, so this is uh, as i already told you the most appropriate way now there's there's another uh, you know very very important thing which we need to keep in mind while we are closing is that when you write regards right what is the meaning of regards regards already mean best wishes right so you need not to write warm regards or kind regards or how many ever regards that you frame because regards are regards you need not write your regards are warm or they are cold or they are kind and what all and what not uh, it is not the most appropriate way to close your email it's it's always good to write regards right so uh, regards itself you know encapsulates the entire wishes that you want to pass on to your recipient so that's fine i think uh, we need not to elaborate it by making it warm or kind or whatever adjective that you want to use so regards in itself is complete um, of course uh, sincerely or any other salutation or any other closing statement that you want to use is completely your discretion okay so here is a sample email uh, which i have uh, put together for you um, you know using all the information that we just started so let's um, let's have a look at it so here is the subject line so subject line says new member in the team and then there's an exclamation mark so of course reading the subject line itself you understand the tone of the email right it's kind of it's supposed to convey excitement right so 
only if required we have used this punctuation so you understand the importance of using a punctuation right so of course reading this itself the recipient will get to know okay this is something you know exciting uh, information that the email is going to share with us and it's 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 a good news for us that there's a new member in the team so it's that kind of an emotion which has been uh, conveyed right so then you have your salutation hi team again a very very formal way of um, you know greeting someone so then you have um, in all the relevant information that you want to pass uh, on to your teammates or your recipients and if you observe then there is a line gap between the two different paragraphs right so then you have um, you know whatever information or whatever intervention uh, which you require from the recipients is what you mentioned in the last paragraph and then uh, you know again a line space and then you have your signatures or your closing statement right so this is how you are going to frame your email just remember that there should be a line gap between your different paragraphs which makes your content really really uh, you know presentable for the recipient to read and then in the end you have your signature then of course that's completely up to you as to how much information uh, you want to pass uh, forward from your uh, along with your signature that's completely your description so you have regards and then your name or your, you want to mention your designation your number or your organization's name or completely that's your choice how you want to take it forward from there right so this is the most formal and correct way of framing an email and do not forget to you know use all the do's and don'ts that we've just uh, studied while you are framing your email so that your email is really really presentable because that gives the first impression right so it's kind of a first impression that you're portraying through your email right so friends this was all about email etiquettes we will see you again in the next video till that time keep learning with tutorials point and tutorials have a good day